A Catholic couple banned from adopting their two foster children because of their views on same-sex parenting have exclusively told this programme they won't give up their fight to adopt. The couple, who can't be identified in order to protect the youngsters, had their adoption request refused after telling a social worker that children need a mummy and a daddy when they learned the young siblings were to be adopted by a gay male couple. The council said their beliefs could be, quote, detrimental to the future of the children. The couple are appealing against the decision and are meeting the council today. In their first TV interview, I spoke to them about their fight. We're not using their real names. These two children have been with us from early this year and we're really attached to them. They're attached to us. They fitted into our family very naturally and it was like they've been with us from the very beginning. We have other children who are very happy having them here with us as well. We never treat them differently to our own children. They were always treated like the others. It's lots of joy. It's lots of fun. Because he's very energetic and a happy boy. Well, you feel young, don't you? Yes, I feel younger. When did you start to think, we'd like to adopt him? We were always ready to. We see them in our house forever, in our family. Our hearts are not full. So if you have a child, your love grows with that child. If you see them, they're happy in a loving, stable family. So you think this is what they're looking for. Maybe they should stay forever. And before you, before you were able to foster, presumably the, the authorities were clear that you were religious people, you'd been open about your beliefs. Well, we never hid it. No, we never hid it. Before we started our process of becoming a foster family, we made it clear that we are people who go to church. We've got Christian values. We made this very clear from the very beginning. So the authorities knew who we are, what we are, and what kind of environment it is. Tell me about the conversation with the social worker then, when he said they'd found a prospective couple who could adopt the two little ones. He said that, and we thought that's the time the children won't be with us anymore, and they're going. And when we asked where, he said it will be to a same-sex couple, there will be two men... And I said, how come? The children are waiting for a mum and dad, especially the older one who was already told by social workers that they would have a mummy and daddy. They said this couple is already matched. There won't be any changes. Someone who has decided about the future of their children has never seen them. We were shocked. I said, this has got to be a joke. Was it the prospect of them leaving you, which was the shock, or was it the prospect of them leaving you to go and live with a gay couple and be adopted by a gay couple that was the shock? It's the first thing. It's about them leaving us. And finding out about the couple was something additional. We know there is a British law that same-sex couples can adopt children. They have the same rights as heterosexual couples. We knew that. But seeing our children, especially the girl, I can't imagine her being under the care of two men. Why not? Because I believe the best form of parenting is a mum and dad. That's what we believe. They're going somewhere where they may suffer something. We want to protect them from it. What, what was it, Claire, that you thought they might suffer from if they were looked after by two men? Not because there are two men. It's because they don't know them. There is no mummy around. No mum who knows them. No one who knows their behaviours, their routines. So, at that point, you said, we, we really want to adopt these children. We don't want them to go elsewhere. We, re we love these children. They're part of our family. We really want to adopt them. Um, what happened after that? We put forward our application to adopt both children, and after two weeks, we received information from the local authorities that our opinions shared during the conversation might be detrimental to the future of the children. That if they decide to be homosexual in the future, so our view could affect them, and we couldn't give them the proper support. And I've got that letter there, actually, from the, from the uh, local authority, which says, having heard that the prospective adopters were a same-sex couple, you shared some opinions in relation to this proposed placement, which are concerning, and w which would not enable the service to progress an inquiry to be assessed as prospective adopters, as these views could be detrimental to the long-term needs of the children. When you read that, what did you think? We were deeply shocked when we received the info. We never shared an opinion that is homophobic. Some of our friends are homosexual. Do you think gay people should be able to adopt? In our perspective, it's not really good for children. The children, we believe, should have a mummy and a daddy. But we would like to be able to share our opinion. We think having this answer from social services shows there is no free speech in England. Because if I say something I 
find good or better in my family or my life and it's not hurtful to anybody, well, why shouldn't I say it? And why should that answer stop us adopting those children who love us? Let me ask you, do you understand why the authorities wouldn't allow you to adopt children because, you, because of those views? Well, nobody called us, nobody asked us, nobody sent anybody to assess us or even interview us or ask a simple question. Did you say that or what is your opinion? It was just like an opinion about an opinion and someone who was head of a department decided about the future of the children. We were really surprised about the procedure. Nobody followed the application. Nobody asked us what was your real view at this point. Just said we cannot adopt. All because someone decided that. I mean, the, the, the letter clearly says it, it, it would be detrimental to the long-term needs of the children because, as you know, if one of the children grew up to be gay, it might be, it might be really hard for them if their parents don't, don't believe in, in, in same-sex relationships. You can see that. We have our two children. We don't know what they're going to choose in the future. We try to show them as positive a situation as we can. If they choose to be homosexual, what can we do? We can love them. We have to love them. And we will love them. It doesn't matter what they choose in the future. But this is painful for us as well because they're blaming us for something we haven't done and they are trying to protect children from something that will probably never happen. They're not looking out for their best interests now or for their future. They are happy now and they feel safe and we love them forever. They could have a lovely, stable family forever with us. How do you feel you've been treated by the authorities? That is a kind of hypocrisy, as they knew we are Christian and what our values were, and they never questioned them when we fostered them. Then they ask us to say or accept something we will never accept. I'm looking at the notes that they've made about the, the way you've cared for the children, and it says the foster carers show lovely care, warmth to the children, the conditions in the home are lovely, the children are, are, are delightful, um, the... the the children have been welcomed into your home and it's a credit to you. Uh, affection, attentive, receptive, uh, a great modelling of appropriate behaviour. And, and it goes on and on. So, you, you know, according to them, you've done an absolutely brilliant job of, of fostering them. As you're saying, we have very positive feedback from all the authorities and all the people in the network. And suddenly we're treated as being detrimental. Using the word detrimental is very unjust. What do you want to happen now? We formally appealed against this decision and we're waiting for a formal meeting with the head of department. And by that you mean you mean you want them to you want the two children not to go to the same sex couple and you want to be allowed to adopt them. We believe they will let us adopt the children. That's what we're waiting for. We want to see the children happy with us because we believe this is in the best interests of the children. There is one other issue which is I think that your according to them your house is not big enough to adopt. You can foster these children, but in, in order to adopt them, you would have to extend your home. The house is big enough for a while, say, I don't know, a couple of months, but we're making arrangements because we own another property somewhere else, and it was like our savings. But we decided to sell it now in order to extend our house to make it more comfortable. If you're not successful in this review process, how would you feel about these children not living, not being part of your family anymore. We won't give up because we think this is what the children want. We think this is the right way. We don't think social services are looking after the best interests of the children at the moment. But if you don't win... We will appeal again and again. And if ultimately the decision is that you can't adopt these children because of your views, how will you feel? No, I can't imagine. Neither can I. We can't answer this question, what are we going to do if we lose it now? We are not going to lose.